In this video, I'm gonna show you how I built a trading analyst AI agent inside of NN10. You can chat to it on Telegram and ask it to check any stock. It will find the chart, study it with AI and tell you exactly what it sees, like if it's going up or down and how strong it looks. It can even compare two stocks and tell you which one looks better. And in case it's your first time here, my name is Michele and over the past 12 months, I've helped over 40 businesses implement AI and automations and taught over 20,000 people in the process, all starting with zero technical knowledge. So I'm gonna show you the whole system step by step. And if you stay until the end, I'll even show you how you can get the whole system for free. With that being said, let's dive in. All right, so the AI agent is divided into two different parts. We have the AI agent here, and then we have the tool that we call, which is the next workflow, which is this one right here, which is made to then get this sort of chart, analyze it with AI and give us the answer back. All right, so I just turned this on. So it's now waiting for a message. I can say, can you analyze Microsoft? And then go. What this will now do is it will talk to the AI agent, which again is prompted with instructions. It then starts calling the tool right here, which is this right here. So if I go here to executions, I can see down that this is running. So there's a current workflow running, which means that it's giving us the answer and it's getting it back. And then it's going to be able to then give us the whole analysis back on Telegram. And now it's gonna give us the actual analysis over here. So overall trend, recent price and actions, support and resistant levels, MACD, which in case you don't know, I also don't know, and volume analysis, overall market sentiment. So basically a full breakdown of the stock because traders go look at this pretty much every single day, right? They look at this, they look if it's going up or down. And so this AI will do that for you, saving you that time of doing it yourself. And one more thing that it can do as well is it can compare two different stocks. So I can say here, can you now compare Apple with Microsoft? And I can go play. What this will now do is it will send it again to the actual tool. But the only difference now is that it will do it twice. So it will send the first item, which in this case, it will be either Microsoft or Apple. It then analyzes Microsoft. It will get the graph. Then we'll get the graph of Apple. And then it will give us the full analysis of both stocks together. As you can see, it was smart enough to know that it already sent us the graph for Microsoft. So what it did is it sent us the graph for Apple right here. And it then gave us the actual analysis of overall trend, recent price, MACD, volume analysis, support and resistance, and current market positioning for both Apple and Microsoft. So now you're able to actually compare each one individually in all the different uh, categories right here, which are about six. And we have the key takeaways as well. And to me, this is insane because now we're able to analyze stocks individually, but also compare them and have AI do the whole thing for us. With that said, let's go through step-by-step step exactly how it works and how we set it up. So this right here is a typical structure of an AI agent, right? We have the input, we have the output. Now, in this case, the input will be Telegram. So the first step is actually connecting our Telegram account you can do this by going here, press this button, let AI tell you step-by-step step what you have to do. It's a longer process than, than I would explain in just two minutes. And as you can see right here, this is the output, right? And the output in this case is update ID, message ID, from ID is bot, first name, language, all these things we don't really have to know. The only two variables that we really care about is chat ID, because this allows us to actually send back a message in the same thread. It's sort of like you're having a conversation with, let's say your friend, you don't wanna be sending a reply to another guy, right? You wanna be sending the reply to the same exact conversation. And so this right here is the conversation. It's just numbered. And then we have the text. So the text right here is the actual text, right? It's the actual text of what we ask the AI agent to do. And that's what it will use to then send to the AI agent, which is instructed, it's prompted to do different things, uh, to then take action. When we connect the input to an AI agent, which has a prompt inside, so I'll go through that in just a second. But the AI agent in this case is connected to a brain, which in this case, it's Claude. And to connect your Claude account, you have to go here, go to anthropic.console, log in, go here, create a key, put a name for it. So let's do NA10, add, and then you will get this key that you will then paste to go back here. Then choose the model. In this case, we have different models. Claude 3.5 Sonnet is fine. We usually look for uh, quality plus speed, but for something like this, I think quality is more important than speed because it is quite a technical sort of topic. So we wanna make sure that it actually is good. Then we have the memory. So you connect this right here, memory, which in this case is just a simple memory tool, which is N10's memory tool. And we give it the context window of five. Now, what this means is that it takes the previous five conversations or the previous five messages sent by me, which is great because like you saw, I told it, hey, now compare Apple with Microsoft. So it remembered already that we already analyzed Microsoft. So what it has to do now is just analyze Apple. And it's all because we have this exact uh, memory tool. And one more thing that we add here is a chat ID. This is so that it remembers the actual chat that we're having 
with the AI agent. And then finally, we have a tool. Now, before I get to the tool, let's go through the prompt inside here. It will be a tools agent because we're using tools. Define below, which is a user prompt, which is what is the thing that we're telling the AI agent to do, which in this case, like I mentioned, is the text right here. So we drag this across. And then we have the system message. So if I go here, this prompt is quite extensive, as in it's pretty detailed. And by the way, if you want a full blueprint, I'll show you at the end how you can get it. And right here, we're not doing any rocket science. We're using the exact same prompt structure that I mentioned on my video up here, which is prompting AI agents. And that is using an overview. So you are an AI agent specializing in XYZ, giving it an identity. Then we have context, so things that it needs to know. And then instructions, because it's important for it to know exactly step by step what to do. Then we have tools. So tools is very important because then it knows what to call, what action to take based on what we tell it to do. Then we have examples, which is the assistant prompt, which means that we give it a few examples. So it has some context when it actually does the thing. And in this case, we give it three examples. And then finally, SOPs, which is pretty much the same as instructions. And then final notes, which are some final things, final rules to give it. And so in this prompt, what we basically say is, look, the user is gonna ask you for a stock to analyze. What we have to do is just call this tool when you want to analyze any stock. And so this tool right here, what it is, it's connecting or it's calling a different workflow inside of NA10, which is the one right here, which I'll go in in just a second. And so this isn't a typical AI agent where you just connect a software directly here and it takes action on the same workflow. This is an AI agent that calls a different workflow and then gets a response back, just like a boomerang. Now, if I go inside here, the only thing we have to do is name it, so get chart. And the reason why we added get chart on the prompt is so that it knows that this is the get chart tool. And now that I think of it, I think I called it, I think I added a space in the prompt. So let me go here and edit it. Uh, get chart is fine, actually. Get chart. Okay, that's fine then. Make sure that the name of the tool is exactly the same as the name in the prompt. So get chart and then the description, which is what does it actually do? In this case, call this tool to get an analysis of a requested stock. Please return the URL from this tool in marked on formatting. For example, this URL. And the reason why we asked the image to be in this format, it's so that it can then send it over to us in Telegram in a format, in a way where it actually makes sense. Then we have the source. So this is saying, okay, we're calling this tool, which is calling another workflow, which in this case is here, called anything workflow tool. And right here, we give it a description of the workflow. And then we have source. And source and workflow just means, what do you want to call? In this case, we want to call the name of the workflow, which we have right here. So to set this up, you have to make a completely new workflow and make sure that you have this node right here, which is, I believe, uh, when executed by another workflow, which is the one right here. And so you're sending the data and then you're getting the data back, which in this case, the from list will be two technical analyst agent because that is the name of this right here. And again, I will give you the whole blueprint for free so you can just play around with it. And so with this done, what we get in the technical analysis agent, if I go here to executions and I go to the previous one, and I can press this button, copy to editor, which will show me exactly the data that I previously mentioned before. We get this. Now, for those of you who are new to the trading world in stocks, it actually isn't that hard. If I go to Apple stock, I can see that Apple stock isn't actually called Apple. It's called AAPL, right? NASDAQ, which is again, the boss of all the different stocks in the US. And then we have AAPL, which is in this case called a ticker, which is a short version of Apple Inc. Right? And so we want to send it to the actual thing to make the chart and so on. We have to give it in a way where it actually understands. So we can't say Apple Inc. We have to say AAPL, which is why we call them tickers. Once we receive the ticker from this AI agent right here. And so what would happen here is that we give it a, can you now compare Apple with Microsoft? And it will know that now Apple needs to be turned into a ticker, which would then be sent here to the tool, which will then be sent here, which is the actual workflow and which is this. And then this will be the thing that we now use to actually make the chart and download it. Now, the question you've been asking yourself is, how do we make charts like these? How does this happen? We have to go to a platform called chart slash image.com, which is the one right here, chart slash image.com. And you wanna be able to make an account, so sign in. And this is completely free. The only caveat to this is that we have a daily limit of 50. So you can only call this 50 times. The next step you wanna do is go to the API documentation, which is just a documentation that says, hey, here's how you can use it, right? And the left-hand side, 
just understand that the base URL, which is a URL that we have to call, which is always a, sort of like a link that you say, hey server, do this for me. This is the start of the link. And then to actually be able to call the right exact graph, because we have tons of graphs that we can call. We can get this, we can get this, we can get all of these. In this case, we have to choose the right one. So if I go here to the graph that we want, if I go under, I can then see something called a curl. Now a curl is something that we just literally just paste into a HTTP node, which is a, just a square instead of NTN that will do everything for us. So all you have to do really is copy this curl right here, go to NTN and then be able to just add a HTTP request. And then all you have to do here is import curl. So you go here, you paste this and you import it and you will have this. And that's when you start filling things out. Now, if you get the blueprint, you won't have to set this up, but at least now you know exactly how it works. And right here is where we start adding everything. Now, one thing you have to add is slash storage, because then it allows us to be able to get this as a URL format and make sure that everything's good. Make sure this is post so that we send the information of the ticker and then we get something back, which in this case is a URL of the actual um, stock. And then we have to put the X API key. Again, the API key is something that you can find here. API key, generate a new key here and then copy it. And then content type, make sure this is application slash JSON because all in all, you just want it to give you the right format, right? And then finally, the thing that matters the most is this right here, which is what are we actually telling the, the server to do? As you can see here, this is the body. We call this the body, which is what is the instructions that we tell the actual server to do? Like what stock are we asking it to, to get? In this case, you can see that we have a symbol, which is NASDAQ colon ticker, which we get from the actual previous steps. Now, as I showed you before, the way that the stock is represented is NASDAQ colon Apple by right, ticker. So we want to do the exact same thing right here, NASDAQ colon ticker. And so with that said, what it returns to us is the URL of the actual stock right here, like I've showed you. And then finally, you want to put response format JSON because we added up here that we want the content type to be JSON as well. So just make sure you have this and you have this here. So you're able to get the URL of the actual stock. Once this is done, then we want to be able to download the chart. So download the actual URL because this isn't publicly available. So that open AI or an AI can actually go inside the image and analyze it. So the next step is just using a simple HTTP request to get the link and download it, execute the step, which looks like this. We get it in a binary format. Binary is just the way that an image or a file is represented in the web which then goes to the next step, which is stock analysis, which is an AI. So we choose OpenAI and the way to connect your OpenAI is just by going to platform.openai.com. You can log in, you can go to dashboard. On the left-hand side, you can go to API keys, create a new secret key right here, and then put a name and then create the key like we did for Claude. Bring it back here, put the API key here, and then make sure you choose image, which is the thing that we're actually using. And the action that we're taking is analyzing image. The model can be GPT-40, that is good enough. And then we give it a whole prompt. So text input, which is telling it, hey, you'll be given an image. Now just assess the image, analyze the actual chart based on the candlestick analysis, MACD analysis, volume, support, actionable, other observations that it then uses based on the binary data, data here, data, data, that we give it as an input. So you wanna make sure that this is binary. And I remember thinking that binary was, uh, was such a complex thing, but what it actually is, it's just literally a way for the web server to represent files. And so what we say here is we say, hey, here's the input, which is in a binary file. And the name of the input is data because that is the name of the variable that we get. So just put data here. And then detail can be auto, that's fine. And now what it does is that it takes the actual stock and then it gives us the output, which is this right here which is candlestick analysis. If I go to JSON, I can see the whole thing. Right here, potential breakout zone, the price is approaching 270. It's giving us a whole breakdown analysis of that stock, which we keep for now. And we go to the next step, which is Telegram. And if you have the connection that you made before, use the exact same connection. In this case, it will be message, which is the actual thing that we are manipulating or changing. The action that we're taking is send a photo, which is we're sending the actual graph. We're not actually sending the explanation first. And the chat ID is a thing that I mentioned that we called or that we had right here chat ID, schema, chat ID. This is only a one-time thing, right? Because once you copy this here, it will send everything to that specific conversation. So once you copy this from there, you will then be able to have the photo URL be sent from here, URL, which is a thing that makes it look like this in Telegram. And then finally, the actual thing that goes back to the AI agent here for it to actually finish 
is the last step of the workflow, which in this case is here, which is response. And the response will just be the analysis that we get from, uh, where is it? Stock analysis here, which is a content right here. And this is the thing that then goes back to the AI agent side here as an output. And finally, we made the graph, it's sent to our channel. It then sent the analysis back to the AI agent. It formatted it in a way where it actually makes sense. And finally, it sent it to Telegram right here with the chat ID, which you can get here, chat ID, and the output, which in this case is here, output. And make sure that this is message and send a message. So let's try this out one more time. I can go here, I can say, can you analyze Amazon? And by the way, not all stocks are gonna be recognized here, right? Like something like Samsung isn't part of NASDAQ, to my understanding, to my knowledge. Um, and so if you put Samsung or something like that, it will not detect it on the next workflow because it is not part of that subsect of stocks. And so make sure that whatever stock you ask it to do is within the category that we added when we asked to make the chart. So now it's giving us the chart, which did it in the other workflow. And then finally here, it gave us the actual trend. Now I'm gonna do something interesting that I haven't done before. So let me actually execute the workflow again. Let me go here and let me ask it, can you now compare Amazon with Apple and with Microsoft? I'm gonna go here. I'm interested to see what this does, if it remembers this, if it remembers the other one as well, and what the output will give us. And it seems like it doesn't actually call the tool because it already analyzed the three of them, which is amazing, brilliant, because now we have the full analysis here. So overall trend, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, recent price action, MCD analysis. So let me say, which one should I buy? I'm gonna go enter. Let's see which one tells me that I should buy based on this analysis right here. As you can see, we have this here. As an AI assistant, I'm not able to provide specific investment advice or recommendation. Fair enough. Yeah, so I guess we just have to look at this right here and decide for ourselves. There you go. All right, so this right here is obviously a very cool use case, uh, but it should give you ideas for other use cases that you can build, right? And the ability for us to call different tools within our AI agents and then bring it back all in one place. And that's the beauty of tools within the AI agent because you can talk to it as if it's a normal human, but it can take actions on different things. And again, it all depends on what tools there are out there, like the image chart tool, because if it wasn't for this, we wouldn't be able to actually do this. All right, and if you wanna import this into your own account, check the second link down below, which will take you to my community, go to the classroom section, the templates vault, and then you'll be able to see the trading analyst AI agent. All you have to do is press this button, you download it, import it into your own account. And if you have no clue how to do it, then check out this tutorial right here. And if you apply and you get in, you also get access to the AI Automations 101 course. So I hope you enjoyed this use case. And if you're someone who wants to start and scale your AI agency, then check the first thing down below. And if you like this video, you're gonna love this video up here, where I show you eight hacks to build better AI agents inside of N10. With that being said, I hope you found value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.